In this video, we're going to look at drawing and interpreting pie charts. Let's start off with some basics. If we have a pie chart, it's a graphical representation of the proportion of each of the categories within our data set. So it's going to give us the relative size. So for example, if I took this particular data set, the sector for the blue is going to be a lot bigger than the sector for other or pink. So we're looking at the proportion, the percentage, or the fraction that each of these contributes to the total data set. So we won't necessarily know the frequency, we will just see how much each contribute. What we're going to do is start off by drawing a pie chart, and then we're going to go on to some questions on interpreting pie charts. So it says here, the table below shows the favourite colours of the pupils in class 11C8. We're asked to draw a pie chart to represent the information. A pie chart is a circle. The first thing I need to do is add the frequency. So if I add the frequency, 9 and 12, 21, 25, 33, 35, 36. We know that the angles in a circle sum to 360 degrees. I'm going to divide 360 degrees by 36 students. This tells me that each student needs 10 degrees. So we can say 10 degrees is equal to one student. So I've got my scale and I can go ahead and now find how many I need of each. What I'm going to do is build on two columns to this particular table. You certainly don't have to, but it might make things slightly easier. What I'm now going to do is work out how many degrees I need for each of these sections. So what I'm going to put here is the degrees, so this is going to be the degrees needed, so degrees, and then I'm going to have now a running total. So just putting it here, this is going to be my running total. This will make it easier to draw. So I'm going to have now my frequency of 9, 9 times by 10 is going to give me a 90 degree angle, or if you like, a right angle. We're going to multiply this one by 10, that's 120 degrees. This one by 10, that's going to give me 40 degrees. This one by 10 again, 80 degrees. This one by 10, which is 20 degrees. And then finally, multiplying by 10, we get 10 degrees. This should add up to 360. If it doesn't, check what you've done wrong. My running total, I'm going to have 90 degrees, and now I'm going to add these two together, and that's going to give me 210 degrees. I'm going to add the 40, which is 250 degrees. I'm going to add the 80, which is 330 degrees. I'm going to add the 20, which is 350 degrees. And finally, adding the 10 gives me the 360. The reason I'm doing this is so when I draw my pie chart, I'm not going to make a mistake. Sometimes students start at naught, they go to 90, they start back at naught, go to 120, start back at naught and go to 40, and have it all bunched up. So let's go ahead and get a circle. So we're going to have my pie chart, and my pie chart is going to look something like so. And I'm just going to place that there. What I'm now going to use is a protractor. You can use a 180 degree one or a 360 degree one. I'm going to use a 360 degree one and I'm going to place it like so. I'm going to start at the top at naught and I'm going to measure around to 90 degrees. So if I put this just here, that's going to be naught and then we'll come around to 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. I've just read that round the top. I'm now going to come round to 210 degrees. 210 degrees is just here. I'm then going to go to 250. 250 degrees is going to be just here. I'm then going to go to 330. 330 degrees is just here. I'm now going to go to 350, which is just there. And then I'm back now at the start. So all I'm going to do is now locate the center and we're going to go ahead and draw this up. So let's do that. And let's say the center is about there. So that's going to give me my center. The reason I've done it this way is, as stated, students start at naught, they do 90, they start at naught, they do 120, they start at naught, they do 40, and it all ends up over here. And that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and just connect this up. So what we're going to have then is 
Now the zero, we're going to have the first sector, like so. We're going to have the second one. We're going to have now the third one coming back up and we can just fill these out. We would need to label this up and I'm going to put now the colours on these. So when you come to label your pie chart, put favourite colours of class 11C8. So this is going to be red and I'm just going to put on here now that's going to be a right angle. We've got now 120 degrees, so 120 degrees. We wouldn't necessarily be asked to add the degrees. I'm going to do it for completeness. This is going to be blue. We're going to have this one just here. This one is going to give me a 40 degree angle and that is going to be yellow. So just putting this on. The next one we've got is going to be an 80 degree angle. So just writing this on, 80 degrees and that gives us green. On the next one, we're going to have 20 degrees, which is just there and 10. So just scribbling this in, 20 and 10, we're going to have now on here, pink. So let's write pink. And then we're going to have other. So that is my pie chart. If we took the pie chart alone, we'd have no idea what the frequency was. All we'd be able to see now is the relative size of each of these within the data set. So how popular each one is. So from this straight away, we could see that blue was more popular. We could see that one quarter of the students chose red. But beyond that, we don't have any information about the actual frequency. Because for all we know, 11 C8 could be 10 times bigger than the original 36 students. So drawing a pie chart, we work out now how many degrees we need per person or per uh, colour and then just go from there. So that's what I've done. One student is 10 degrees, and then we've gone ahead and drawn this up. Okay, so that's drawing a pie chart. Let's now look at interpreting a pie chart. So sometimes we'll be expected to be able to read them. So it says a local factory gives its workers the options of doing one of three shifts, the day shift, the night shift, or the weekend shift. There were 120 workers in the factory. The pie chart below shows information about the choices workers made. How many more workers chose the weekend shift over the day shift? There are a few different approaches that you could do with this. What I'm going to do now is look at splitting 360 degrees by 120. So if we do that, we've got 360 degrees, which is the sum of the angles in the circle divided by 120. That's going to give us now three degrees per person. So per person, and just jotting this down. So if we look now, the weekend, so these are the weekend people, we're going to have 210 degrees divided by three degrees, and that gives me 70 workers. If we look now at the day shift, what we'll have, we'll have the day shift, and that is going to be now the 60, so we've got 60 degrees, so 60 degrees over three degrees, which gives me 20. So we had 70 who chose now the weekend, and then we had 20 who chose the day. 70 minus 20 is going to be 50. So that's one way that you could have done it. Alternatively, we could have gone the other way. What we could have said is that 210 of the 360 multiplied by 120 gives us now 70. And that would give us the frequency. So remember, this is proportional. You could, of course, simplify this fraction if you want, dividing it now by, uh, we could divide that by 30 and go from there. If we looked at the day, so that was the weekend, we could look now at the day and we could say that we had 60 of the 360 and we'd multiply that by 120. This would break down to 1 6. 1 6 of 120 would give us 20. So you can work it forwards or you can work it back. It's entirely up to you on how you want to see that. You can work out how many degrees represents each person or you can see this now as a fraction of the total amount and multiply it by the number. Okay, so that's one particular question. 
We're now told pupils in class 8R1 filled out a survey about how they got to school. Some walked, some come by car and the rest went on the bus. Four pupils said they went on the bus. How many pupils are there or were there in 8R1? Okay, so what it says is now uh, four pupils said they went on the bus. So what we can say then is 45, if we do it this way, 45 of 360 is going to break down into 1 eighth. That's the fraction. So 1 eighth of the pupils, so 1 eighth of pupils is going to be equal to 4. So we can say now that this is going to be the pupils. So pupils, total number is going to be 8 times by 4, which gives 32. That's one way of looking at it. So all I've said now is 45 of the 360 is going to give me 4 pupils. I know that 45 over 360 is 1 eighth, and if you're unsure, do 45 divided by 360. That gives us now, that's 1 eighth of the total number of people. If 1 eighth represents uh, 4 people, then all we need to do is multiply it up. So that is now interpreting. So the first example was drawing, that's interpreting. And as stated, as you saw on the last one, there are lots of different ways that you can find these answers.